Yup, yup, yup. It is Sunday, fun day. With all of its splendor, it is a beautiful day. Um, in spite of the rain, the expected rain, in spite of the gloom, all of that. It's still a good day. Um, I hope everybody is having a wonderful Memorial Day. Um, I do apologize. I, as promised, I said that we would converse at least uh, twice a week. Um, and I was negligent <laughs> in my word. What's up, Denise? I was negligent in my promise, and I do apologize. Hopefully, you know, you, you can forgive me. But I just wanted to, you know, uh, you know, uh, start the week off right. Um, because I think that some people, some of us have a adopted the wrong mindset or myths of others. I was talking to somebody the other day and they said, <laughs> they said, you know, every day can't be a good day. They said that to me. And, and oftentimes we think, hey. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Denise. Uh, and oftentimes we adopt little cliches. We adopt uh, certain um, colloquial sayings. We adopt, you know, certain uh, mindsets of others, not knowing that what we are adopting and adapting to ruins us. Let me give it to you again. It's crazy how we adopt certain thought processes, certain mindsets of others. And we don't know that internally, when we adopt those, we allow them to have an effect on us. And so what happens is we sync our mindset with theirs, thereby either putting us in the same level as them, the same predicament as them. Ultimately, we have the same outcome as them. If they're broke and we adopt their mindset, then guess what ultimately happens? We become broke. Yes. And so what that person said to me, he said, Cook, every day will be a good day. And while that may be true, while that may be true to some others, that's not my truth. And I can't adopt that mindset. Yeah, sir, certainly, uh, you know, you're all we're all going to have um, certain crises or, uh, you know, certainly we're all going to have, you know, dilemmas and things of that nature. But that doesn't mean you have the right or you don't have, you have the right to adopt that mindset. No, you can't. You can't allow, you can't feast on other people's negativity or you can't feast on other people's perspectives. Because quiet as it's kept, 80% of the population has low self-esteem. 80% of the population can has ne always avoids crises crisis and you can't allow yourself to be amongst that 80 percent Nah, you have to redefine who you are you have to continually feed your mind that even though it, it, it doesn't seem positive even though everything around me says that this is going to be a bad day that doesn't mean that i'm going to adopt and adapt to that mindset that to change your perspective, change your lenses, change the way you think about it, change it. Yeah, you can't. And so for that particular person, they might live a mundane life. They might go through life with that woe is me mentality, that pessimistic mentality, that negative mentality. Why? Because it has been it, it has gone through the lineages of their their um you know, their family. It might have been passed on. Uh, it might have been one thing that happened to them that made them like that. And it's a dangerous thing to let one thing affect you. And it carries you through your whole life. It's called transference, right? So transference is, transference is, is when we allow the things of our past, the things of our childhood. Many people have different you know, meanings of it, but I'm going to give you Richard Cook's meaning. It's when we allow the things that we've gone through, the things of our past, to affect who we are in our now moment. You got it? It's when we allow the things, the historicals, our past contents, our past tense, what has happened to us, affect who we are. And you can't do that. 
You can't allow one situation, two situations, three situations, four situations to affect everything that God has in store for you. You can't do it. In fact, in fact, you know what's crazy? In fact, you know what's crazy? The thing, the, the, the craziness of it is, is that so many people, Bobby, so many people go through life being allowing one situation, one circumstance, one event to diminish their thoughts, to diminish their future, to diminish their gifted, their gifts. They, start, they, they think that they're not even worth nothing. It's crazy. They think that they're not even worth, worth anything. You know, I'm working on two sermons at one time, and one of the sermons that I'm working on, right, well, my, my Bobby, I'm gonna call you as soon as I finish this. I promise. Uh, one, because we got a wrap. Um, one of the sermons that I'm working on, right? I'm working on this sermon about David, right? It, 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 and it, it, it's peculiar um, that and in Samuel they said that he was rude. They said he was small. He, they, they, it, it says that he was red, so on and so forth. You know that he didn't meet the standard. You hear what I said? He didn't meet the standard. They said his brother passed by first, right? So his brother looked the image. His brother had the image. His brother looked good. His brother was handsome, so on and so forth. And he was so handsome that Samuel said, surely this is God's anointed. They said, no. And then everybody passed by. And then you had somebody out there that was skinny. That was red. That he didn't fit the mold. Even his son, even the father, Jesse said, look, he, yeah, I got another one, but he's out there. He wasn't even considered a factor. And I'm saying to you that it doesn't matter if you don't have any teeth in your mouth. It doesn't matter if you have stretch marks. It doesn't matter if you gain weight. It doesn't matter if you don't have any limbs on your body. It doesn't matter if you can't articulate the difference between a verb and an adverb. That don't matter. You can't allow one thing that has happened to you, one person that has disrespected you, one person that has diminished or said something evil to you to negate or neglect everything that God wants to do. It's the calling. Your calling is not defined. The calling of God is not defined by Gucci. The calling of God is not defined by Louis Vuitton. No, it's not. And I know you see these TV evangelists, their teeth look good, they're handsome, they roll up and all of this. And, and you see these, these pastors or, or, or bishops or, or all of them, all they look good and make it seem easy and all of that. You see these holier than thou people, they speaking in tongues, they running around the church acting simple, all of that. You see them do the dance and all that. I'm saying, God can still use you. That's an image. That's the image. We don't, God says, I don't look at the image. I look at what's in your heart. And you've been holding back on everything. And you being disrespectful to your life. All that's inside of you. All that good stuff that's all up in you. All that potential that's all up in you. All of that goodness and goodness and, and, and everything that God has deposits. I believe all of that, 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 that goodness that's been all of those deposits that God has been giving you. You're going to really hold all of that back from people like me, from people like your children. You're disrespecting your life. It's time to stop being disrespectful. Kleist, it's time for you to stop being disrespectful to you. I don't care what the image that you don't have. I don't care if you gain some weight. I don't care if you have one tooth in your mouth. I don't care if you've been beat up. I don't care how many people disrespected you. I don't care if you have, I don't care if your self-esteem is as low as the gutter. God still can use that. In fact, in fact, when you look at peruse through the Bible, all of the people who have flaws, God used. Did you hear what I said? Everybody <laughs> that God 
I mean, everybody in the Bible God used. It's so much so even to when we get to, and I'm going to close with this, even to when we get to the New Testament. I'm going to preach on this too. That he doesn't even, the people are not defined by their name. Let me give it to you again. In the Old Testament, we knew, what's up, what's up, kid? In the Old Testament, right? In the Old Testament, we knew, uh, Jack, in the Old Testament, right? People were defined by their name. You had Moses, who had a stammering tongue. You had, uh, um, you, you you had Noah who drank, you know, you, you, you had David who had, had um, issues with women. Um, you had uh, Jeremiah who was the weeping prophet. They were defined, right? But then when we get to the New Testament, right? The New Testament, the people were defined by their situation. Hey, kid. The people were defined by their situation. You had the woman with the issue of blood, right? You had the man that's laying by the pool, but he, he, he was paralyzed, right? They're defined by their situation. And then Jesus shows up and heals them of their situation. We don't know the names. We only know that their situation was better. And I'm saying to you, you know, God doesn't even have to, even though he knows your name, he doesn't care about all of that image stuff. He wants to use you. And you hold them back. Stop playing. Stop looking at everybody else. Thinking that they got it going on. We don't even care about what them. You got next. We don't even care about what, what they was jumping off in their life. You got next. And But you can't have next. If you don't position yourself for next. You hear me? If I told you half the stuff I've been through. I'm going to close. I promise. If I told you half stuff I've been through. I don't even tell people what I've been through. Because some people it might scare them. It might scare them for real. If I told you for real, for real, I mean a lot of people know I lost my house. A lot of people know I was on welfare. A lot of people know that, um, you know, that, that I lost everything, my cars. Everybody know I was in the gutter. All of that. But if I really told you the gritty, it'll blow your mind. But I don't tell them. Why? Because my situations don't define me. And I'm saying to you, you better love yourself. You got to go hard in the paint, baby. People looking at you are like, you the underdog? Like, who are you? Like, you ain't nothing. Like, you ain't never been nothing. I've known you for 20 years. You ain't never been nothing then. So how you going to be something now? And then when you switch the game up on them and then allow God to use you, then they're going to get a hissy fit. And then all of them, the people that you thought, was in your corner, they start turning on you because the blessings, the gifts start coming out and the blessings start flowing in. Stop disrespecting yourself. Stop it. There's too many snakes out here. It's bad and there's too many snakes trying to bite you. Don't let the snakes of your past bite your present. We got to make moves, baby. We got to make moves. We rebuke the devil right now. You got to go hard. The NBA Finals, the Finals, the Super Bowl of your life, the World Series of your life is at stake right now. And you can't allow what has happened to you to affect what's going to happen to you. Every day is a holiday. That's the quote. Every day is a holiday. We don't adopt that poor man's mentality. We don't adopt that broke mentality. I grew up broke. I grew up in the hood. Everybody knows me, but that doesn't define who I am. You get up every day and you're going to say to yourself, I am somebody. I am somebody. It doesn't matter what they think. I am. Before you go to bed, I am somebody. I am somebody. Tomorrow's going to be a miracle making day. I don't care. We got to get it. Don't let your New Testament, the people in your New Testament define you by your situation that has happened to you. If they can't get over some of the stuff that you did when you was 17, they can't get over some of the stuff that you did when you was 30 and they got to keep bringing it up, cut them. Goodbye.
You can't be afraid to cut off the lesions in your life. You can't be afraid to cut the snakes off. You can't be afraid to cut the blood suckers off because it's too much going on right now. It's too many blessings that's going to drop. And as long as you keep letting the snake and putting that venom in your life, you can't be no punk about it. You will rather cuss everybody else out. <laughs> You would rather cuss the people in Walmart disrespect you. You go hard on customer service. The people out here that's that, that, that's out here that that cut you off in the streets when you driving. That cut you off when I you cuss them out. You go hard on them, but you won't call hard on them snakes in your life. You won't call hard on 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 those negative people in your life. Cut them. Cut them. Huh? You need to cut it. Huh? Them snakes in your life. You need to cut them. It's too much. I gotta go. My man Stan, I gotta go. Let me tell you something. If I ain't never tell you nothing for real, for real, for real, for real, stop looking at what you don't have. Stop looking at your flaws. God specializes in them flaws. Did you hear what I said? My man, Stan, he specializes in your deficiencies. Huh? He specializes. Let me tell you something. I'm going to close with this. And true story. Let me tell you something. When I, when I come at you, I don't come at you with no bull crap. Right? And I'm going to tell you this. When I was in the, when, 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 all throughout my whole life, right? I was always looked at as this bad kid. People ain't never really want to deal with me. All that, right? So when I got to the ninth grade, they, you know, I was just so bad. The teachers would just pass me and all that, right? So when I got to the ninth grade, right? It's like when I got to the ninth grade, I never get a teacher called on me. I forgot her name, Miss Mitchell, right? I couldn't even read by the time I got to the ninth grade, right? And so, so it took me 20 minutes. So I act like I was coughing, right? I'm in there. She said, Richard, read this paragraph. I really didn't want to call because I knew I couldn't really read, right? And 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 I started coughing <coughs> and uh, <coughs> trying to fake like I could really read. I knew words, but I couldn't read. It's a difference. So for th so from the tenth, from the ninth, tenth, eleventh, and all that, I started hitting the streets because I felt like that one incident made me feel, and everybody in the class laughing at me like I'm an idiot. Hey, Kim, like I'm an idiot and all that, right? That one situation. They laughed at me, right? And so I felt like I take that one, and I'm preaching this on Father's Day too. Same thing, go, uh, uh, something along the lines. Um, but they laughed at me. That one incident from the ninth grade, right? Made me feel like I wasn't nothing. And so that led me to live in this street life, right? So I'm hitting the streets and all. I said, I can't read. I ain't no good to nobody. I ain't no good to life. You know what I'm saying? That one incident, people laughing at me, right? They disrespected me, saying I wasn't nobody, all that, blah, blah, blah. And that carried on. It may allow me to get in all of this trouble, so on and so forth. One situation defined my life. You hear me? The same thing. You've allowed one situation to get the best of you. And it has to stop, right? And so, so people wonder why I go so hard, right? Why I go so hard in life now, right? Why, I, you know, I, I, I when in, in undergrad, I, you know, I did the whole 4.0. People wonder why I go so hard with the homeless. People wonder why I go so hard with the, uh, with the, the mod, marginalized, right? People wonder why I go so hard with all these certifications and all these degrees and all that, right? It's that one incident. The one incident created havoc in my life in the beginning, right? But then I turned it around and took that one incident as a motivation, that's why I go so hard. And I'm saying to you, whatever the dilemma is, if it was the abortion, it was the molestation, if it was the domestic violence, whatever it is, you got to allow that thing. Notice I heard. What's up, my, my man, Dave? No, I stopped, bro. You got to allow that thing to flip. Don't matter what that one situation is. If it, if the, if he hit you and the domestic violence, I've helped so many people in domestic violence. If whatever the situation, if they stole from you, if they lied on you, if they cheated on you, I'm saying to you, you gotta allow that one situation. Allow it.
Did you hear what I said? You have to allow it to work together for your good. Allow it because you're the person that's stopping it. You have to open up your own floodgates so God can just pour it in and help you. The time is now and the choice is yours. Get it together. Get it together and stop disrespecting your life. Every day is a holiday. We go hard or we die trying. Let's go.